Welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 12 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the properties, methods, and events of an ASP.NET checkbox control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 11 of this video series where we have talked about radio button control because the properties, methods, and events of these both controls are very much identical. So when do we actually use this checkbox control? A checkbox control is used when you want the user to select more than one option from the available choices. For example, the education of a person. A person can have a graduate degree, a postgraduate degree, and a doctorate degree. In this case, the user selects all the three checkboxes, whereas a person may just have a graduate degree, in which case he only selects the graduate checkbox. Another example would be when you want the user to select the days of his availability for an appointment. Okay, If he is available only on a Tuesday, then he only selects that, whereas if he is available on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, he will select all three of those. So in short, we can see that if you want to provide the user with more than one option to select from, then choose a checkbox control. In ASP.NET, we can also use checkbox list control for the same purpose. We will talk about checkbox list control in a later video session. Now this checkbox control exposes several properties, methods and events that we need to be aware of as a developer. Let's look at the properties first. The checked property, this is very much similar to radio button control. So this checked property is a boolean property that is used to check if the checkbox is checked or not. Let's look at an example. So here I have three checkbox controls, graduate, postgraduate, and doctorate checkbox controls wrapped inside an HTML field set element. So if you look at these three checkbox controls, they have the ID and the text property. Text property is what you see on the UI. So we have set the text to graduate, postgraduate, and doctorate. All right, now let's run this. Now what should happen is, after we run and when we select, when we make our choices, we should you know, print on the screen what selections the user has made. For example, if I select graduate and postgraduate, and when I click the button, you should show on the screen your selections are graduate and postgraduate. If I select three, we should show all three of them. Obviously, to get the selections of the user, we have to use the checked property. So let's see how to do that. So I double click the button to generate the event handler for the button control. Now, to store these user selections, I can use a string variable, but I'm going to modify the string variable. That's why I'm going to use a string builder object instead of string variable. And string builder object is present in system.text namespace. So let's import that. So system.text and string builder. So SP, and let's call this user choices. So here we are using camel case notation, SP standing for string builder, and this variable is used to capture user choices. All right, so if graduate checkbox dot checked, so this checked property will return true if that checkbox is checked. If it is checked, what do I want to do? SB user choices dot append. So to this object, I want to append the text of this graduate checkbox because if you remember, graduate checkbox text is graduate. So that text will be appended into the string builder object. Graduate checkbox dot text. So repeat this code for all the three checkboxes that we have. That's for postgraduate and this is for the doctorate. So postgraduate checkbox. If that is checked, retrieve the text from that checkbox and then append that to the string builder object. Similarly, we have the doctorate checkbox. So doctorate, copy that and paste that there. And finally, all you have to do is write that onto the screen. So to write that onto the screen, we can use response.write. Your selections
so string builder object dot to string we have spoken about the differences of why you use string builder object over system dot string if you're not sure please check uh, the video uh, series on C sharp where we have covered the differences between string and string builder classes so now let's go ahead and run this so obviously when we make our choices and click the button so I selected graduate I click the button so your selections graduate if I select doctorate and postgraduate as well look at this we get the output but this output is not so clear because you know there are no spaces between them so let's format this properly and to do that obviously let's append a space a comma and a space just to indicate that this is another selection so let's do the same thing for the doctorate checkbox so now let's run this and now it should be properly formatted as expected so graduate postgraduate select that so your selections graduate comma postgraduate and when you select the doctorate you should see that as well alright so we have used the checked property to get the selection of the user and you use this text property uh, to get to get or set the text associated with the checkbox control and text align this is very much similar to radio button control uh, you can control how you want to align this text do you want that to be on the right hand side or on the left hand side if you want that on the left hand side then go to the properties and change the text align to left which is very simple and you see that the text is aligned on the left hand side of that control so let's put it back to right side so that's the text align property and the auto post back property it's again similar to just like uh, you know radio button or text box control if you set this property to true you know it will post the page back immediately when the checked status of the checkbox changes so now if you look at the property it is set to false which means when the when I double click this checkbox obviously this checkbox has select uh, checked changed event so we get the event handler generated so let's say response dot right um, this is the graduate checkbox so let's say graduate checkbox selection changed so whenever the selection of this checkbox changes I want to print that message now if I run this and then when I change the selection of that checkbox it won't immediately post back to the server because we have set the auto post back to false so it's not posting back so this event gets fired only um, when I post the page back on button click look at this that's only that's when only it's fired but if you want this you know if you want the page to be posted back immediately on the selection on the checked status change then set this property to true so as soon as I set that to true run the page and when the selection changes the page will be immediately post back to, uh, you know posted back to the server it doesn't wait for us to click the button alright so that's auto post back let's put that back to false because we don't want that to be posting back to the server when the checked status changes alright so that's auto post back and focus method just like how we use the focus method to set the input focus onto a text box control you know we use it for the same purpose for a checkbox control let's say when the page loads you know I want the focus to be on the graduate checkbox is it possible to do that absolutely we can use the focus method so when the page loads on the page load I can say um, graduate checkbox dot focus and I want to do this only if it's not a post back because during the first initial get request that's when I want to do that so if not is post back call the focus method on the graduate checkbox so now when we run this as soon as the page loads I'm not sure if you can see this but as soon as the page loads look at that there is this little you know dotted square around the graduate checkbox now I don't have to take my mouse and click that if I press spacebar at this minute it's already you know that graduate checkbox has got the focus so it will be checked automatically 
So if I if I click my spacebar once, it gets checked. If I click it, if I press it another time, it gets unchecked. So just to see that properly, let's shift the focus to postgraduate checkbox and you should now see the second checkbox receiving focus the postgraduate checkbox I hope you can see this in the video alright so that's about the focus method and then we have already seen the checked change the event okay now you can also use this checked property to specify a default setting for example let's say as soon as the web form loads I want this graduate checkbox to be checked can we do that? Absolutely. All you have to do is so graduate checkbox dot checked. We know that's a boolean property. You can set that to true. So what happens on page load? It will be checked automatically. So we are doing that in the code. You can do that at the design time as well. So as soon as the page is loaded, it is checked. Okay, we are doing it in code here. If you don't want to do it in code, you can do that in the HTML as well. So on the web form, you can go to the graduate um, checkbox and then it has got the checked property there. So checked is equal to true. The moment you do that, what happens at the design time, it shows as if it is checked. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.